Hi there, if we haven't met then my name's Ellie and I'm a chronic pain and jaw pain specialist. Um, so today we're going to talk about something that people ask me a lot um, and we're going to go into that and just give you a really helpful exercise at the end of this video to take away with you as well. So the question I get asked all of the time is do I have a trapped nerve or I've been told I have a trapped nerve and this can be in relation to all sorts of pain but it comes up a lot with jaw pain, neck stiffness, um, even headaches. So we're going to just address that today. So do I have a trapped nerve? Well the short answer is probably not. Um, nerves there's a few places in the body where nerves are prone to being trapped um, and that's either as they leave the spine or there's certain kind of bony landmarks um, and muscle structures in the body that can cause the nerve to be trapped. Now, um, in relation to jaw pain and headaches, there's not... A very it's very unlikely that the nerve is actually trapped somewhere however it is fairly likely that the nerve is irritated or um, not able to run as freely through the structures as it would like to so it's not so much of a trapped nerve but more about the health of the nerve which um, can often contribute I don't I I really never find that that's you know the nerve is the only structure involved there's usually a, a lot of muscular involvement as well in jaw pain and, and headaches um, but if the nerve is involved then it's usually the um, actual health of the nerve and the ability to easily pass through the structures that it needs needs to pass through in order to get where it needs to go so the nerve in question that we're always talking about when we think about the head and the face and the jaw is the trigeminal nerve now the trigeminal nerve has three branches so it comes out from sort of high up in the right at the top of your neck there branches out into the head um, and those although occasionally I'll come across somebody who's had a diagnosis of something 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 neuralgia so that can mean that the nerve is trapped in a particular place the most common one is trigeminal neuralgia so tri trigeminal neuralgia is um, an irritation of the trigeminal nerve. So that's the nerve that feeds the head and the face there. Um, occasionally I hear of somebody having a more kind of particular diagnosis, but it's still the trigeminal nerve that we're talking about here. So it might be that the nerve is getting stuck at a particular bone in the skull and it's giving a different name. But um, if you have been told that you've got something 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 neuralgia then you know we're still looking at the same structure here the trigeminal nerve it might just be that you've been able to pinpoint a bit closer as to where it's irritated okay so i hope that makes sense so um just a quick kind of overview on the trigeminal nerve and where it uh, feeds and where it can possibly get stuck so it comes up through these muscles here called the suboccipitals so they live in the base of the uh, skull there so it passes underneath those so they can be really relevant for um, nerve health basically if they make if these muscles here are a bit tight a bit shortened have trigger points in then that can often cause the nerve to like just not not to be trapped but just not to pass as nicely through that area as we would like it to. Uh, another place is as one of the branches comes out here and feeds the masseter um, and then goes on from the masseter. Um, so the masseter muscle there can be really 
relevant when we think about uh, the path of the nerve. Um, yeah, so really that's the answer to that question, as in, do I have a trap nerve? You probably don't have a trap nerve because a trap nerve usually will usually will present as a few days of kind of agonizing pain and then a release um, and, and then a healing, you know, and I imagine that most of you here have been sort of had ongoing pain conditions for more than a couple of months. But it is possible that the trigeminal nerve is getting irritated at certain places as it passes it, as it passes through the structures. So I hope that makes some kind of sense. Um, and we're just going to do a quick exercise which actually can help to improve that nerve health. So this is something that um, I sometimes give clients to do um, in between um, the other work that we're doing together on, on, on our muscles and, uh, and things like that. So it's kind of like a um, accessory exercise, but um, I would really encourage you to just have a go at it and see if it works and see if it doesn't for you. So really important is to just do this for one day, see how you feel the next day. Um, and then if you, if you feel okay, you don't feel like, you know, the nerve has become more aggravated, then it's something that you can, can incorporate. But just go easy with it because uh, occasionally people find that this actually can aggravate the nerve. Um, and then, you know, it's not the exercise for you. But give it a go, see how you feel the next day. Um, and then if you feel okay, then incorporate it in, in a daily basis. So what we're going to do is something called nerve gliding. Um, now what we do for this is we actually um, encourage the smooth gliding of the nerve through that whole chain that it, that it runs between. And it's actually um, a really good way to work on any scar tissue that can exist in the nerve um, and should promote good health in the trigeminal nerve. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, well, it's a good practice to work both sides, whether you've got pain on one side or both. So there's four steps to this. So the first one is to tuck the chin like this. So you keep your, your spine nice and straight and just bring, bring the chin in into a chin tuck. The next one is we're going to take the ear to the shoulder. So let's all go to our right. So right ear to right shoulder, just as far as feels comfortable. And then the next step is, is to imagine you've got a front pocket here and you're going to look towards it. So you take the head down and the gaze down towards that area. And then when you've got that, we start to move the jaw side to side. So keep a relaxed jaw. And for 30 seconds or so, we're going to just move the jaw side to side like this. I'll stop so I can talk, but if you keep going with that, um, just make sure if any of this feels painful, then just keep it, you know, dial it back. Don't take the jaw so far to the side or don't take, you know, the eyes so far down towards that imaginary pocket. And you might feel a bit of crunching, which is totally fine. Again, as long as it's not painful. Okay, then we come up to the center and then we're going to repeat that on the opposite side. So the first thing we do is tuck the chin. Then we take the left ear towards the left shoulder to as far as is, as is comfortable for us. Then we take the gaze down and the head to an imaginary um, front pocket. And then we start with the side to side. You don't want to go too fast with that jaw movement either. Just go at your, just go at sort of one per second, one per, one per two seconds kind of rate. And again, just make sure the pain levels are not getting high. A little bit of discomfort's fine, sort of, a, you know, a one or two out of 10, but anything more than that, I mean, just take it back a little. So 
So that's it. This is that one simple exercise, trigeminal nerve floss. Uh, have a go at that. Um, let me know how you get on. And again, just leave it a day after the first, the first try, just to make sure you haven't aggravated any symptoms. Okay, so let me know how that is for you. And let me know how you feel about, um, have you ever been told you have a trapped nerve? Have you ever felt this could be the problem? It'd be really interesting for me to know. Speak to you soon.